I want you to know that we're lovingly concerned about you. We're not just trying to win an argument or anything of that sort. We're trying to be faithful to Christ. And those that love Christ will obey him. And I believe with all of my heart that the Bible teaches just what we have gone over, that we don't have the right to be wrong about faith in God. We don't have the right to be wrong about faith in Jesus Christ as his son. We don't have the right to be wrong about believing the gospel. We don't have the right to be wrong about obeying the gospel. We don't have the right to be wrong about repentance. You simply have to change your mind about sin and be willing to submit your life to Christ. You don't have the right to be wrong about having the courage to stand up before men and confess his blessed name as the Son of God. And you don't have the right to be wrong about being baptized, about being immersed in water uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, which is unto or for the remission of your sins. Now, I know there are many, many thousands of preachers who will tell you otherwise, but the Bible doesn't. It teaches, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And there's no way anyone can give fair import to that language and deny the essentiality of it. Salvation is in Christ, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. And friends, there is not one, not a single passage in all the Bible that tells you how to get into Christ other than as a penitent believer who loves Christ with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength is baptized into him. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27 says, So then you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ did put on Christ. You clothed yourself with Christ in that. But let's think about the fact that I realize that uh, some people ask. In fact, I've encountered a great many people who ask the question somewhat like this in the face of uh, our having studied a lesson as we've just studied. Some people say, but won't God save a man if he is truly honest and sincere, even if he doesn't believe in God? Well, I want to make, make clear that I believe as strongly as I possibly can that honesty and sincerity is necessary to salvation. It's necessary to salvation through Christ. Christ is not going to save dishonest people. He isn't going to save people that are not sincere. Now, if you're honest and sincere about your religion, and you see, you've seen some things today from the Bible that maybe have made you wonder, well, am I right or am I wrong? Is it not enough for me simply to be sincere and to be religious? I emphasize to you, my friends, that Christ teaches otherwise. The Bible simply teaches that while honesty and sincerity is necessary, it's not sufficient. You've got to be honest and sincere to be saved, but that alone is not enough. Let's see if we can't illustrate that. You know, each one of us is living because, among other things, we uh, breathe air. I cannot live without breathing air for very long. If you cut me off from breathing air, getting oxygen into my lungs, I'll be dead likely within five, six, seven minutes anyway. There are a few exceptions where people have fallen into water and be real cold, and they can last a little longer. But ordinarily, under ordinary circumstances, you cannot live longer than that without air. Now, air is necessary. But suppose I have all the air in the world, my lungs are working perfectly, my heart is pumping the blood through my body so that oxygen is carried to every cell of my body. Does that mean that I don't need anything else, that air is all I need? No, it does not. How long would I live, let's say, if I didn't have any water? I have all the air I need, but I don't have any water. Or I don't have any food. Well, you can live a little longer without food than you can without water, but you're not going to live very long without either one of them. You see, air is necessary, it's good, it's great, you must have it, but water's necessary also, and so is food, and so is exercise. If somebody just tied you down so you couldn't move, your muscles would atrophy, they'd die, and you'd soon die. You see, there are a lot of things involved. And so it is, it isn't sufficient to study the Bible. It's not a way to study, to simply go to one passage and camp on it and stop there and not read the rest of it. It is simply not enough to believe in God. It's necessary. You must do it to be saved. It's impossible to be saved without it, but it's not enough. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You can't be saved without it, but it's not enough. Merely to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, because you must also repent. You've got to change your mind about sin. You could say to yourself, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But you go right on in your drunkenness, you go right on in your lust, you go right on in your fornication, you go right on in lying and stealing, and you go right on in not obeying the gospel. 
repentance is the change of mind that is prerequisite, is absolutely necessary for you to obey the gospel to become a Christian. You do not become a Christian the moment you believe, as you may have often heard. You do not become a Christian until you, as a penitent believer, are baptized into Christ. Now, sincerity and honesty is absolutely essential, but it's not enough. Now, another question. We're coming pretty close to the end, but let's try to look at one other question. Someone may say, uh, but if one believes in God, he will be saved even if he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of people think that. They say, I'm a religious person. I believe in God, and I try to do right. I don't go to church anywhere. I don't go and worship, but I worship God at home, and I don't really believe in Jesus Christ. I don't really believe in the, in the Bible as the Word of God but I think I'll be saved because I believe in God and I'm a good person. Well, believing in God is necessary and being a good moral person is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Not any more than having air without water or water without air is sufficient. You must believe in God, but you must also believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Recall the words of Jesus recorded in John 8, 24, Except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. My friends, God doesn't want you to die in your sins. He is not willing, the Apostle Peter told us in 2 Peter chapter 3, for any to perish. It's not God's will that a single one of us would be lost. I certainly don't want to be lost, and I don't want you to be lost. And above all, God doesn't want you to be lost. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to be lost. And Jesus doesn't want you to be lost. But what did he say about it? Except you believe that I am he, that is, that he is the Son of God, you will die in your sins. And that means you'll be separated from God forevermore. When you die, you'll be lost. There'll be no second chance. There won't be anything you can do about it. You'll be lost in hell forever. You simply do not have the right to be wrong about faith in Christ. Well, I've emphasized the necessity of our being baptized in the name of Christ, that is, according to his authority. That's not sprinkling or pouring. You can't baptize by just pouring water on a baby. A baby is not a fit subject for baptism. He has never sinned. He hasn't inherited the sin of his parents. He sins only when he sins. He's guilty of sin, only when he sins. He doesn't need to be baptized, but after one is old enough to be accountable and he sins, he violates the will of God, then he has to be a penitent believer in Christ who understands that baptism is necessary. It is the culminating act of obedience which brings him into Christ. It is simply not enough to be a believer. Necessary, but not sufficient. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 30, the Bible tells us that by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been compassed about seven days. Now, how did the walls fall? By faith. Does that mean the walls fell immediately when those Israelites believed? No. They acted in obedience to God for seven days by marching around that city, once each day for six days, and on the seventh day, they marched around seven times, and then they had to shout and blow on the ram's horn. You see, there were at least 15 acts of obedience which followed their faith before they received the blessing. And friends, when you believe in God and you believe in Jesus Christ, there is yet before you repentance, a change of mind about sin, a confession of your faith of God Almighty and Jesus Christ, His Son, and then to be buried as a person dead to the love and practice of sin, but not yet dead to the guilt of sin until you are buried in that grave of water as a person dead to sin and raised from that grave to be saved, not by the water, but by the blood of Christ through the grace of God. May God bless you in understanding that there are many things in the Bible about which we all must be right if we are to be saved. May God bless you is my earnest prayer.